inside my head becoming blurred by so much said I'm in too deep waters I tread can catch my breath All right, welcome everyone to another edition of Deconversion Stories. Uh, today I have with us, with me, because Mikey's not here. Of course, he, you know, he just had a baby. Well, his wife did. Um, and um, uh, he's taking care of the baby tonight. And he's a pretty tired puppy right now, so <laughs> which I totally understand with a newborn. But anyways, we've got, uh, it's it's Micah, right? Yes. Okay. I, I, I was like, shit, is it Micah or Mika or <laughs> Micah? Okay. So it's Mr. Micah Allen Loesch is with us tonight. Uh, Micah, you are an ex-JW, correct? Yes. Uh, it, it's actually Losh, but that happens all the time. So Losh? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So I see I did screw up one of the names. <laughs> yeah, <that works. laughs> so I'm on par. <laughs> We're usually with the, I screw something all the time. So anyways, uh, Micah, what I do is I chat with folks about uh, how they found their way free from whatever belief systems they're once a part of. And I generally ask, you know, to go back and, and sort of take us into those, uh, you know, those days when you were involved and, you know, sort of how those dominoes started falling and what led to the process of you uh, deconstructing or deconverting out of that belief system. So I'll leave it up to you. And if I have something really silly to say, I'll probably just go, hey, hang on and for clarification, you know, no, that sort of thing. Right. So, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah. Thanks again for having me. Um, no problem. I was born into a Jehovah's Witness family. My parents both, uh, they were married and they joined in the late 70s, early 80s. I know it was before I was born. Um, somebody knocked on their door. Um, they both came from pretty, a uh, lot of trauma and tragedy in both families. Um, mm -hmm. My dad came from a lot of physical abuse, poverty, uh, I think there was a lot of molestation, but I don't know too much. Right. And then my mom had two siblings die as children. I think one was nine, one was 14. Oh, her wow. Mother, yeah, her mother died when she was five, my, when my mother was five. And then her, my mother's twin brother died when she was, when they were 37. Uh, and then, of course, my father died uh, when I was 13. So... I really didn't know anybody outside of my parents. Maybe I'd see my other family once a year, maybe. And all I had was the congregation at the Kingdom Hall and my parents. So everybody, you know, reinforced this struck of low luck that I was born into the uh, true religion. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's just what I thought. You know, I, as a kid, I'm like, wow, this is this is lucky. Of course, luck wasn't real, and that was a sinful thought, you know, but. Luck was sinful? Uh, yeah, I couldn't, when I was little, I couldn't say that was lucky because luck's not real. And. Yeah, fair. Um, I couldn't even eat Lucky Charms, which really annoyed me because <laughs> my mom would be like, luck's not real. I'm like, yeah, I don't care, but marshmallows are. I want marshmallows in my cereal. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's you a know, cereal, that was, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. One of my friends couldn't eat tricks because his mom said it was the Easter or the, the Easter rabbit. Oh, the tricks really? money. Yeah, I'm like, even as a Jehovah's Witness, I knew that was crazy. But um, <laughs> that so that was my life. When I was 13, my father died and I got baptized less than four months after. Yeah. Now, despite what I told others and probably myself, you know, I believe my dad would be resurrected, you know, by the one true God, because we were in the true religion. So I pretty much did it to guarantee I see my father again, you know. Hmm. But were you close with him? Now, I have very few memories before he died. I know that my dad, uh, like, I remember a lot of people in the congregation really looked up to him. And some of my friends had deadbeat fathers and my dad, like he would take me horseback riding or stuff. And he would, 
remind me to invite my friends who didn't have it as good as me, you know, to. Oh, to look that's up. cool. He, he was a he was a good man. You know, he worked hard. He had part time jobs. He went to college on and off. And. You know, but at the same time, I, I don't remember a lot of him, um, but what I noticed after he died was, of course, I felt, you know, like someone had, you know, shot a cannon through me. Sure. But everyone else just kind of went back back to business as usual, which I understand. But, you know, even at his funeral, they didn't talk about him or what he liked. It, hmm. it was like a five minute intro going over his life. And then it was all, it was a talk to try and bring people into the religion. And that, I remember that seemed very unseemly even though I believed, you know, that's how God wanted it. You know, it's like, but then of course I wasn't taught to trust my mind. So I'm like, well, that's, that's your, you know, a sinful thought, whatever. <laughs> but I, I started to be mistreated and kind of pushed away and rejected because I had depression, which only made my depression spiral. Oh, I and, no doubt. Um, I pretty much from 13 to 33, I mean, I, I have very few memories. It, it was just all the same. It was, you know, I got put on antidepressants. My mother would have me locked in like uh, stress centers for uh, like three hour holds. Hmm. And there were all these things where I should have thought or questioned, but I didn't because I, I, I never grieved because my dead father was just dangled before me like a carrot. You know, that's just, it was just, I, I have to see him again. Yeah. And I put up with abuse and neglect and horrible things, you know, being, being told, get over your dead father, um, being told that my mother's, oh, shit. Was, yeah, being told my mother's loss was greater than mine. And it really pissed me off because it was like, why doesn't anyone fucking care? Wait, I mean, you know, you'll see your dad again. But, yeah, you know, I was never the same. The person I was died that day and I became a new person. It, it, losing your father at 13 is, uh, it's really difficult. And, and I didn't want, like, to be treated, you know, special treatment. I just wanted someone to say, like, hey, are you okay? It's okay if you're angry. Or, you know, it, I, I couldn't say I, I was angry at Jehovah for not saving my dad because that was sacrilegious. I, I couldn't, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't feel what I wanted to feel. And I, and I internalized that as evidence of, I wasn't worthy of the true religion. I was just born into it by chance and God hated me because every time I reached out for help, his elders who you believe are appointed by God treated mm -hmm. me terribly. Um, and even my mother at times would say, I don't know why they're, they're this way to you, but we have to be loyal. You know, wait on Jehovah is a thought terminating cliche that Jehovah's Witnesses say anytime there's a problem. And so I ended up, um, I got married. I, I witnessed to someone I worked with. They started coming to the hall. The congregation really tried to create a division. So I, I ended up eloping with her and I mean, we're divorced. So, you know, no good marriages end in divorce. And, <laughs> um, but so, so essentially I began drinking and probably when I was about 33, I was just at my wits end and I, I was starting to drink more and more. Now, um, when I got married, there were problems and th the only coping mechanism I had was praying to my God. Well, that never worked. And I was, uh, disfellowshipped and shunned. Funny how that is, eh? Yeah. I, I was disfellowshipped and shunned for the second time for wanting to be with my wife at the time, mm -hmm. uh, because we had premarital sex. So when you're disfellowshipped, you're told you're, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you're told that you're cut off from God. He won't hear your prayers. And I was totally isolated by everyone. And then I'm having marital problems. So I just kept drinking. I mean, it seemed like a good idea at the time. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, and pretty much for seven years, I was drunk every single day. I mean, I would say less than 20 days I was sober. Wow. Not bragging. It, it wasn't a good decision. And no, no. It led to me um, waking up in jail. <laughs> and um, I. Uh, How, why were you arrested? Just drunk and disorderly sort of thing? Or? Well, so I was, uh, like I said, I was married. I had a stepson and we had a little boy. And in a blackout, my, my stepson smarted off to me. I grabbed him by the shirt. I fell on him and I didn't hit him, thankfully, um, not excusing it, but, um, you know, and my memory just shut off and I woke up in jail and they told me I had been charged with battery and, you know, Oh wow. Because, yeah. It's tor towards a, a little boy that I loved very much, which, It was it, it was really difficult hearing that about myself because I don't consider that who I am. You know, I, right. I have right. not that it necessarily even means anything, but you know, I have a really I have a portrait tattoo of that little boy. I I didn't take marrying his mother and you know signing up to help raise him lightly and I let him down. I just you know, I, I loved him. I but the, the alcohol just turned me into a person I didn't recognize or respect anymore. Sure. So there was a, a no contact order with him. And I had a, a, what is it? A, just a defender assigned by the state, uh, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I didn't know any better. So I signed a plea. They didn't lift that. So when I got out of jail, I was homeless. And my car had been repossessed. And I, I mean, I, I had nowhere. I had um, three days where I was homeless. I got to sleep inside two of the nights. And one night I slept in my ex-wife's car. Hmm. And I even reached out to my mother and the elders, but the, things had kind of blown up there because I had had arguments with elders for being mis mistreated, for being suicidal. Right. And so I, they, so it was at the, the worst time of my life. You know, I, I know without a fact that every Jehovah's Witness that I knew, including my own mother, didn't care if I starved to death on the streets in winter. Oh, and, oh, do, 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 you, do you think she just had to put on that face or do you think she actually didn't care? Well, I wrote a letter asking for help, and she testified against me and painted me as a monster, filed a no-contact order while I was oh, in jail. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I know. She knew. Um, she, I mean, she had failed me at every point in my life. Every time I needed my mother to advocate for me, she threw me to the wolves, which were the elders, and their cold mm -hmm. indifference. So oh, That's horrifying. I was pretty, I was destroyed as a human being. Um, I had like $60 in my pocket and everything was spiraling. I, I even called people, worldly people as we call them, you know, and I was like, can I stay inside just one night? Like I need to try and get my car back. No one would help me. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I realized that everyone, yeah, I'd flat out didn't give a fuck about me. So, I mean, you know, so I wound up, uh, I, I got into a, a sober living house, which for me, it's like if you burn your hand on a hot oven, you're like, oh, that hurt. I won't do that anymore. I right. said I would never drink again, you know. And so uh, I started going to Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, it was mandatory to, to be there. And they right. keep telling me, you know, I can't trust my mind. I'm planning a relapse. All of these things that I don't agree with. Yeah. You know, and AA felt very, very similar to me. And I didn't really understand why it felt so similar. And then I, um, so after I was there, 
a month. Similar to like being in the in the face. Jehovah's Witness. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. You know they there's uh they foster codependence on other members of the group and on the meetings. They have an us versus them mentality. Now I do admit mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses are far more strict, but sure. the AA is is very cult like in a lot of ways and well it does have religious undertones so well yeah god with a capital g means the creator but they say it doesn't it can be a group of drunks no it's not an acronym you know <laughs> yeah, and yeah. When, I, when i would say things like that i was villainized very much like the whole room would turn against me <laughs> and and I would say, I don't believe in, you know, well, I, initially I didn't like God and now I, I don't believe in God. Right. But uh, so when I got my phone back, because I, I, I told people there, I said, I think I was in a cult and I, I really don't understand what happened to me. You know, um, just even a, asking that question was a big deal because you're told if you even look at anything against the true religion, your mind will be warped by demonic influence. And <laughs> as absurd as that is, I believed it for over 30 years. Sure. So what I did is I um, Googled, you know, what are the tactics of a cult? And I kind of wanted to see how many of these do Jehovah's Witnesses have. And every single one, just it was from just my childhood on, I was like, Wow, holy, holy shit. So, is it the bite model that you found? Well, I found that. And then I also, just all these things, you know, like thought terminating cliches, um, codependency on the group, um, being very insular, controlling information, even where they control the thoughts inside of you, mm -hmm. which I experienced numerous times because I there were times I would kind of be questioning and then I'd be like, oh, wait, wait, that's, you know, I've been told not to resist independent thinking. I've been told my heart is treacherous, you know, so I couldn't trust my mind or my heart, but I could only trust this ideology. And when I would, and when I would ask questions in AA, you know, it was always, you know, I, I can't trust myself. And, you know, so just, it was kind of all the parallels I was seeing. And, but it, it was also, it was not painful, but it was difficult because I kind of realized how I really had never thought for myself before. You know, I basically just got thrown out into the streets and it's like, hey, your life is really fucked up. <laughs> Fix it yourself. And I'm like, wow, I, I don't even have the training wheels off my bike. I, I, I don't know. It, it really was. I mean, the, the, not the Phoenix rising. I mean, I feel like that's cliche sometimes, but that's kind of what I felt like. It was like just the ruins. I, I just have to find my way through. But I, I felt very, very lost at that time. Hmm. No doubt. I mean, considering what you went through, that's not surprising at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, you had family that clearly didn't give a shit. That left you stranded. You were homeless. You, you know, you, you drank yourself into prison ultimately, and yeah, they got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, shit just seemed to pile up on you there. So I don't blame you for feeling that way at all. Yeah, well, and and also you're you're taught that everyone in the world is controlled by Satan. That's not Jehovah's Witness. So, <laughs> right. I, and and you know the the terror is real. It's like, oh, none of these people are going to help me. But then I found more compassion outside of the organization and, you know, people that have offered to help me, you know, promote my book or just be nice or just even little basic scraps of humanity seem very profound to me because I just didn't experience them for so long. Right. It, you know, I have a bad habit of not making eye contact when I talk to people and it's not necessarily because I'm shy or intimidated it's just that i would go into the kingdom hall and i would look at people and they would look away i'd say hi steve how are you they just turn around and walk away and for years i would be like people aren't responding to me oh that's all in your head you need to try again <laughs> fuck <laughs> all, all in your head yet it's happening right in front of you yeah and you know you don't trust yourself you're like oh yeah the the flaw is me i need to keep 
what is the phrase they use? Not, not extending yourself, reaching out, like reaching out to your brother and sister. You know, it, it's always your fault. Yeah, of course. They can't have fault. That would that would show that they weren't perfect uh, and in the right religion and all that, right? So, yeah, and so once I kind of saw all these similarities to cults, you know, and then I kind of started going through the Watchtower theology and it, you're taught it's this perfect thing, even though they say if they teach something wrong and then they change, they say, well, that was old light, but this is new light. So that's their excuse for a, you know, a deity who's like, he doesn't, they interpret it. it it's all stupid. Once you see one hole, then you see a thousand others and it all falls down, but it's, <laughs> it's looking for that first hole. Like you can find it, but actually looking into it, because for me, that was killing my father. That, that was just one thing. I was like, oh, okay, I'll never see him again. That's really difficult. And then I had to acknowledge that if I am not going, even as messed up as my relationship with my mother is, you know, she thinks that I am, as they say, an agent of Satan. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's absurd. It, it is painful to understand how they mean it, you know, and the yeah. fact that they're okay with their God murdering all everyone. Yeah, I, oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, well, and that's one, like one of the things they say about people who are baptized and leave Jehovah's Witnesses, they call them mentally diseased. So that's why I titled my memoir that, because if you're going to call me that, I'm going to put my face on a book. Like, <laughs> yeah. With By the way, folks, I do have a link. If you're interested in that book below in the description box. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and you know, I, it, it's just very weird to speak out against this religion when you had the, the faith for decades, because it's like, you see the whole mouse trap, but they can't hear you because you couldn't hear, you know, they're, they're so controlled. It's, I don't know. It, it's very, it's very painful and difficult to unpack it all. I guess you know it. It's exhausting. Yeah, I mean, um, from what I know of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're pretty strict on just about everything. Oh, I yeah. I mean, they control your clothing, the car you drive, your job your friends, your mate, your sexuality, your entertainment. There's really, they even have talks where they say if there's a, a gathering and your brother or sister would be offended by a type of food, well, you're better off not bringing the food, you know? Mm. So they will take it to absurd lengths. But if you're not now me, when I would have legitimate complaints about something and would go to the elders, I don't, I would always be told, uh, you know, don't be quick to anger. You need to be forgiving, forgiving. Um, if you're, if you're an elder's child, you're, you're usually given more leeway. I would, in my experience, you know, you say that you say, don't be quick to anger. You should be more forgiving yet. They're not going to do that for you. Oh no. Yeah. You're like, if you're a piece of shit, that's what, that's the side of it you're going to get. Cause they speak out of both sides of their mouth. Cause they tell you also <laughs> mind your own business and yeah. you know, all Jehovah's witnesses are equal, but some are more equal than others. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's that's, that seems fair. <laughs> it, yeah. It's really, it's really bizarre. Even there's a Jehovah's witness where I live and he talks to me, he knows I'm an apostate. But it's so bizarre because his responses, it's like a video game, the NPCs. Like I know right. exactly what he's going to say because recently one of the governing body members, um, the leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses, he, it said he was no longer serving. It didn't say he wasn't uh, a Jehovah's Witness anymore. But that had never happened in my lifetime. And mm. I was talking to him about that. And he, he said – he thought it was an apostate attack where somebody had hacked their website to create, which I was like, yeah, I really don't think so. And 
but but I know even if I go back and say, hey, so it's kind of been proven now that he he he's no longer serving, and he was part of God's mouthpiece. You know what does that say about your God? He would say something like, well, Jehovah cl cleaned his house. You know, Jehovah is not slow to act as men consider it. You know, there's all these stupid little cleaned phrases. His house. <laughs> what does yeah. that even mean? So like in your congregation, let's say an elder is abusing people and he's been ab abusing people f for years. If he's finally found out and removed, they'd be like, oh, well, Jehovah cleaned his house. It wouldn't matter that he spent maybe 15 years abusing children or something. You know, because oh, wow. you, you can't have it that this this perfect God has appointed these men. Well, then why is he allowing them to hurt people? You know, you, you can't have it both ways, but their mind is just so controlled. It, it It's really difficult to to interact with him. I try and avoid him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Jehovah's Witness that you know that still actually talks to you. Yeah, now I, I met him here. He's only been a Jehovah's Witness for about eight years, and I would say he's probably in his late 50s. He, yeah. um, which it's weird because he said Jehovah wouldn't kill you. And I said, yes, he would. Like, I've spoken out publicly against his religion. Like, they call us despicable, you know, all these things. So I don't, I, I don't know where he's getting his ideas from, but. <laughs> Outside of that, all the other Jehovah's Witnesses I knew beforehand, um, I've seen quite a few of them. They don't speak to me. They just look at me like I'm a monster. Oh, wow. You know, it's it's funny you say, oh, Jehovah wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't kill you or whatever. And I think about that the Bible verse where, where he sends uh, some she bears to maul a bunch of kids because they made fun of Elijah's bald head, right? Like, so I was like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you mean he wouldn't? <laughs> well, I, re I read one thing. They said, well, it wasn't children. It was like men in their 20s. Well, <laughs> the, so it's, yes. yeah, it's it's still awful. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm bald. If people make fun of me, I mean, I might be like, you're a dick. But I don't <laughs> expect them to be like, you know, it would be just as if bears eviscerated them, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you deserve to be eaten alive. That That's love. You know, the, the personification of love that they have for God, I mean, it, it's just staggering to me, all of the, you know, verses like that and things that <laughs> they just don't make sense. But I never questioned them because I was taught that questioning them was evil. So... That kept me, you know, reined in for a long time. He's kind of a kind of a dick, if you ask me. At least yeah. the, you know, I don't believe he's real. I'll say the character of God is kind of a dick. At least yeah. more so in the Old Testament, and so much than the New. But uh, he's still kind of a dick. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting that I think I read the first time love is used in the Bible is when he told Abraham to go kill Isaac to prove his love for him. You know, yeah. if you any of the like traits that God has, if you put those into a human being, an insane narcissist, but mm -hmm. because he's God, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I try not to think about why I didn't question it more because it just kind of drives me crazy. But, <laughs> right. Oh, you got a bit of a hang on here. I got to find it now. That's not it. This is what happens when my producer is in here. There we go. Oh, I, I think I know what's going on now. That's Ollie. It's got to be or no, it's probably just another announcement. Oh, the third one because I think there was one earlier that I forgot. Oh, the, oh, the hashtag coins is, is a drinking game. Oh yeah. Back when I was drinking beer during the show, and every time you hear my phone go off with the Mario coin noise, uh, we'd hashtag coins and you have to drink. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine quite a few people got a little pie-eyed during the show because the thing tends to go off quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I can't drink drink anymore, but all I got is I, I, I swung by uh, Walmart today and I always like to grab like a, a this isn't Coke Coke, it's Coke Zero because I don't uh -huh. really want the sugar. Just to wander around, I was trying to find something. I didn't find it, but oh well. Yeah. Oh, McDonald's, McDonald's Coke is amazing. I don't know. Fountain Coke. I like Fountain Coke. Yeah, I don't know if it's the carbonation or what, but mm, it's good. <laughs> yeah, 
You know, it's funny you mentioning McDonald's, and this is completely off topic, but uh, I watched a, a, a TikTok about these two guys that were co- comparing American McDonald's versus Canadian McDonald's and the taste differences. And apparently the Big Macs in, in the U.S. Um, taste better than the Canadian ones. And I've had both, and I really couldn't tell the difference. But I guess you have to eat them one, like, side by side sort of thing. Oh, like I a bite know. of one, then. Hmm. Yeah. Apparently the Americans make a better Big Mac than we do, so. You go, oh, all right, all he did is triple stoner haikus. One, two, and three. There you go, Ollie. Light your pipe. Because he doesn't drink, so he has this gigantic fucking Gandalf pipe that he likes to put some oh, weed wow. in it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Deadpool. Oh, shit, some people popped in here I didn't even notice, except for 0125AR who said something that I, I highlighted earlier. About the man picking up sticks and was killed there before it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and yeah. The, yeah. the shirt of what, like a polycotton blend shirt. God would have killed you at one time for that. This one right here. Yeah, you know it's well, and and if you look at like in the Ten Commandments, he doesn't mention rape. He doesn't mention child molestation. No. Nope. It's it. It's it's really weird. I, I don't know, just to the distance from it, because, you know, like you, I, you would walk, I would walk around just filled with judgment, even if I didn't really, like, I might see somebody with a mohawk and I'd think, oh, they look cool. But yeah, but God's going to kill them. You know, they'll only look cool while they have <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, because, you know, you can't have unnatural colored hair, you know, unconventional oh. hair, even, even long hair or a beard like you. They all had long hair and a beard back then. Well, it, once I said, why can't I have a beard? But you can have a mustache. And somebody said, don't you think, maybe God changed his plan for facial hair. And I was like, he. What? But God he, never he, changes, I thought. It, exactly. It's, it's, it's delusional thinking. And anytime, you know, something is brought up, they just, they just shimmy to the side and say something that you can't refute you know it's it's weird because for me personally i i know people who left jehovah's witnesses but i don't know anybody who ever spoke out publicly and i would say i know 500 to like 700 people pretty well in this state Mm -hmm. so it's weird when they come to my job because one night there were 30 40 people and i grew up with all of them and I was washing dishes behind the bar and in the sea of people, because it's a huge bar, we can have close to a thousand people in there on busy oh, nights. Shit. Wow. And it's it's a big lower story and then upper story. But every time I turn around, all these sets of eyes are right on me and then they would look away. All these mm-hmm. people that I played with when I was like, you know, five, we were teenagers together and all that. And it's weird because I remember seeing a pot, well, not apostates, just people that had stopped serving. And I really felt uncomfortable when I was around them because, you know, it's like, why would you choose to die with this world? Hmm. So I really, I, I wish I could, maybe I don't wish I could hear their thoughts, but I wish I could, you know, because <laughs> they must think I am just no a thanks. completely loathsome piece of trash to have spoken out against, you know, their loving God and the truth, but. Loving I mean, with, with quotations. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I find so much freedom in just, I don't know. I was just so controlled. I, I And really, it all just kind of unraveled. So it was like, well, I want to put my story out. And now my son, my ex-wife, is not a Jehovah's Witness. She never got right. baptized. She did attend meetings with me. But, but she just wasn't interested in it or... I think, you think she, maybe she saw the bullshit or what? Well, now she says that she saw th- when with the baptism questions. I think the final one is like, do you not pledge allegiance but agree to serve Jehovah and recognize the governing body? And she was like, this kind of seems like I'm serving men. So she never progressed, you know, past that point. But she still right. went to meetings and everything with me. And then she isn't involved. My mother, who doesn't speak to me, is who gets to babysit 
my son frequently because mm-hmm. you know when my life blew up i've been repairing it but you know i don't have a any babysitters i get my son usually once a week um well, at least you get to see him yeah and and we have shared custody it's just as i'm you know working it, i'm just not in a place where i can have him more but right, right, right. they have propaganda cartoons called caleb and sophia and my son was telling me about how Caleb in one of the videos walked funny or something and made him laugh. And the reaction, oh, it just, it was so revolting, you know, because I, I know my mom fills her house with people from the kingdom hall when she has my son, because, you know, I know that she will try and push it on him because she thinks it can save his life and he can live forever. And, you know, and they also kind of teach members that if he were to join, that might draw me back. And that's just, oh God, that's hmm. really torture to know that. Um, now he doesn't go to meetings or anything. So I don't think it'll affect him as much, but you know, they, Jehovah's Witnesses say that they're involved in spiritual warfare and they say that. Yes. I've heard that before for sure. That when I was a child, I was taught to pray to Jehovah every night to destroy his enemies, which meant you and every single person that's not a Jehovah's Witness for God to kill them. Mm-hmm. You know, even when we would go out in service, we would see nice houses and pick out which one we would move into after Armageddon, after God had killed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Really? Oh, that happens all the time. That's because fucking funny. A lot of people are like, well, Joe comes with a Mercedes. Like, oh, exactly. I was like, I'm getting, I mean, I've had three Mustangs, but I was like, I'm going to drive my Mustang <laughs> in these neighborhoods. You know, like they, they have these thoughts that are really awful, but they don't know they're awful. And one thing I like to say is I was taught hatred, but told it was love. Sure. No and, hate, and, like and, Christian love, they say, right? So. Yeah. The whole, the whole, you know, you think everybody deserves death. You think children who don't know any better because their parents aren't serving Jehovah deserve death because who's going to raise the kids. They, they just have hideous, ugly belief after one, after the other. And yeah, it's, it, so I, I want, I, I really, that was kind of the impetus for why I wanted to write my memoir because I felt like, Oh God, I'm fighting my mother for my son, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. him to think his wishes and desires are sinful. I celebrated Christmas with him first time for me last year, last year. Yeah. Wow. And that was, it was really emotional. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I I'm decorating the tree. Another uh, ex Jehovah's witness sent me a little tree and some presents, which was super sweet, but I'm, that's cool. I'm sitting there with the tree and I'm like, well, I don't even know how to do this. You know, I tweeted, how do I decorate a Christmas tree? I didn't know if the lights went on first or, you know, and so all these little. Does it matter? That, I mean, I don't even know if it matters. I don't I think just, it matters, man. Yeah. And well, I, I wanted to do it right for him, you know, but it's like sure. I kind of am learning how to just little basic things. You know, I, it, it almost feels like when I woke up, you know, I was just destroyed and then a shell of a person and I've just slowly been building myself back up because just everything that I was around that I was comfortable around was dysfunctional and cruel. And, you know, where I, where I uh, work, it's a very gay friendly area, which is fine. You know, it's, it, most of our customers are really nice, but still sometimes I would see a gay couple and I would think, I, just for a minute, I think like, oh, they're they're disobeying Jehovah. And then I'm like, wait, I don't believe that anymore, you know? And it's slowly getting where I don't have those thoughts. But right. there are so many of them, like saying, God bless you. People will sneeze, and I'll sit there for 30 seconds. And then I'm like, oh, I can say that now. God bless you. And they're like, well, that was weird. Why did you wait so long? But it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know. It's just... It, it's a process and it's just all these little things seem really profound to me because I just, I thought that God would kill you for saying, God bless you as psychotic as that is. I did, you know? So it's, I don't know. It, it, we also, my son and I, we, our birthdays are five days apart. We had our first birthday. uh, And you know, it's, 
I don't know. When, when I was his age, my mom told me I was a good for nothing slave. That's what they say. To oh, wow. And my son, he turned five. And sometimes I'll look at him and that just really, it, it just hurts my heart for me. Cause I'm like, how fucked up would it be if I told him that? Right. You know? Yeah. It, and, very. Yeah. And I remember thinking that seems kind of harsh, you know, it's like, well, how is the God of love saying I'm a good for nothing slave? But I mean, that was just my childhood. At least he gets to have a better one, you know? Um, and I mean, I don't know. It's it, he, he can know his dad challenged a coal. I mean, I think that's really cool. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. more than anyone else, I did it for him. And I, I have plans to, uh, this year I'm going to put out two more books as well. So oh, cool. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm calling it the apostate trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> you should get them on audible i know i need to i have a couple online friends who have offered to uh read my memoir for me but i'm not because hmm. i self-published and everything so i'm not sure how that would work i know i have the rights but um yeah like in my memoir one of the things i did growing up is i always loved art so i would paint or write poetry and i had uh poetry from when I was 18 until now. And when I was uh, going through it, I, I realized how much I was struggling with my faith in my art. You know, it was a safe place where there was plausible deniability. But so in my memoir, I put a poem before each chapter. And then uh, my second book is going to be a collection of all my unused poetry, a hundred pieces over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also writing a, uh, like a horror novella about, someone thinks they're in the true religion but it's a cult and during covid they become the antichrist and oh, <laughs> which I, I always loved horror movies you know and even that i was told like that was evidence of how sinful and evil i was and i, I never heard of that being a symptom of covid before but that's that's kind of cool oh well yeah <laughs> you know so get covid become the antichrist all right <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, I've met some really nice, it, it's it's so funny because I, I even remember we would be going out in service and we might see somebody with like a bandana and long hair. And I, I would hear Joe's witnesses be like, oh, I'm not going to waste my time. And I would always think, well, if I know the truth, why wouldn't I try and save them? You know, and in my experience, people with tattoos and that look unconventional, whatever, are usually far nicer than conservative Christians, you know, <laughs> it's, Oh yeah. 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 I'm, I'm with you. You're saying about how you're able to say, you know, bless you or God bless you or whatever. I, 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 I don't even say bless you anymore. I just say, cause in tight people still go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's, Which, I know especially to your health or something. I think it means that. Yeah. Remember, exactly. Yeah, I I know because I'll say bless you, and then I'm like, oh, but I don't mean like you know like any of that crap. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's just. I, I what do we do as atheists? <laughs> yeah, that's harder. <laughs> um, I think like with the the deconversion, you really have to you have to challenge. For me personally, I had to challenge every single part of who I was because you know I was so controlled. I was. I was like, do I really even like like this type of car or food? You know, it just, I just felt like I had to rebuild every single part of myself. Mm. You, um, I think that's literally what you're doing now is rebuilding yourself from the person that you were when you were trapped in that bullshit. So. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I was born in that, that was all I knew for 37 years. So it, it just, it's staggering how you have this notion of what the world is outside of this group, because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that even though most people probably don't know their exact beliefs, that most <laughs> people know they serve Jehovah, who is the true God. Most people know they're the, they, or they think that people have this idea of them where they're this very clean kind gentle people 
But, you know, when they go door to door, they don't ever lead with the most offensive aspects of their faith. They present this kind of feigned or this, you know, this fake version. And they, mm-hmm. they want to see how much they can pull you in before they tell you the really ugly the heavy shit. Yeah. yeah. And because a lot of times I'll talk to people and I'll say, well, I was in a cult. And they're like, oh, which one? And I'll say Jehovah's Witnesses. And they're like, that's a cult. A lot. So many people have really no idea what they're about and it's it's so weird just that i i just thought just everybody knew because they tell you people are watching you and they notice your good example and your grooming and how clean you are and just all this absolute bullshit <laughs> true enough um rose c in the chat says that uh jehovah's a wizard of Oz, and i use that analogy all the oh. time it's like once you see behind the curtain it's kind of hard to go back to believing that there's this invisible wizard kind of person, right? Yeah, so. it, the, the, their theology, their theology, excuse me, it just doesn't hold up. It doesn't make any sense. And once you see, you know, one lie, one inconsistency, it's just like a spider web. It just expands and yep. it all falls down on you. And it's really painful. And it's a lot. It's like it all that you're just covered in rubble and then you just have to work your way out almost, you know, I just, one of the dumbest things, it's embarrassing. So I don't know if you know that Prince, the singer uh, died a Jehovah's witness. Yes, he did. Yeah. And when I was married, talented guy, man. Oh, sure. Yeah. Amazing. But I remember talking with my stepson and my ex-wife about how I always wanted to learn how to play an instrument, but I'm not talented that way. And saying in the new system, when Prince was resurrected, I wanted to learn how to play guitar and play music (laughs) with him. (laughs) And that thought really existed in my head, you know, because you're told to like fantasize, see yourself in the paradise and all these, you know, you think all animals will be peaceful. I wanted to swim with sharks. Since I was a little boy. <laughs> you can I, do that today. Oh, I'm going to go to Florida and go cage diving. But cool. No, you um, can actually swim with sharks, like nurse sharks, I think, or something. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to hold the fin of a great white because Jaws was my favorite movie as a kid. And <laughs> I couldn't take a bath for weeks after seeing that movie. Oh, oh it, ter- it, yeah, it terrified me, ruined swimming, but I still love it. And um, yeah. yeah, so th- that's one of the really bad things about Jehovah's Witnesses. And in my experience, when my dad died, I just was like, okay, I need to try and be as good of a person as possible so I can see him again. And I didn't pursue so many of my passions or like jobs I may have wanted because I was always prioritizing the religion. And you're so busy, it really robs you of your passions. You know, there are talented artists and singers, musicians, and some do. Oh, nice. Yeah, the opening music, that's me. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That's awesome, man. (laughs) And, you know, so many of them, if they don't get to use their talent in the organization, like drawing for the publications or whatever, you know, they can't try and be a a singer or an artist. They can just do it as a hobby. But even your hobbies, you need to be careful. Why? Do they they poo-poo that idea of making something? Yeah, because you need – well – When I was a kid, it was three meetings a week. You need to study and prepare service at at least once. So you need to have a job where you have all this time off. You know, they don't want their members to become potentially famous or well-known or successful because then they're, they're going to leave the group. Mm. And so, and also, (laughs) yeah. And also your hobbies, you know, let's say you really like to draw. Well, that's fine. But you should still be prioritizing, you know, reading scripture, reading publications. You know, you're always told you can do that forever in paradise. So be obedient now so you can have the real life then. So they really rob people of their passions. And so that's like, yeah, it's so insidious. You know, my, my, when my father, yeah, it is. When my father was dying of cancer, they said, if you take a blood transfusion, you might live longer. And he refused it and died. You know, I don't know if it would have helped, but I could have maybe had an extra day. It would have. Yeah. And he 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 martyred himself. And I I just watched so many people live squandered lives. I, I know a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses that are very, very talented. I would go over there and they're like, hey, this is my art or whatever. 
oh, that's awesome. Have you ever tried to do a show? No, no, no. You know, I got to, I prioritize Jehovah. You know, they rob people of their passion, which that's the best part of life. And yeah. I just hate, I hate them. <laughs> so for me, like <laughs> I always loved words. So, I mean, I published one book and I'm going to do others. And, you know, I have like, like, yeah, I'm going to go, I want to go skydiving, swimming with sharks. And I have plans and, you know, in motion to do that stuff. Because for me, very good. I like to talk about or with other people who have come from similar places, but I don't really like to just rehash all the bullshit Watchtower is pushing out because I just feel like it tethers you to them. I can't watch it. It People use the word trigger a lot, but it, it triggers me. I can't watch it. And it's they use a, it because it's a thing, dude. That's why. Yeah. And, and it's. Watchtower and JW.org, it's all bullshit. <laughs> you know, I, I wasted enough time on that. And so I, I, I don't like talking about that. I like um, also the, the the artist who painted me, which I have the painting over there too. She's an ex-Jehovah's Witness. And for my other two books, I found two other ex-JW artists, which are going to cool. design the cover. So I really like the idea of, you know, people that were raised like me, even if they are mormon ex-mormon or whatever you know there's like connective tissue you feel an understanding that a lot of people just don't and i i think it's cool to you can talk about it but build on it and move away from it you know i don't i don't want to just rehash it in these cyclical conversations but oh bye hr <laughs> but, uh, good people i uh yeah you know the like the uh, Twitter community, I'm pretty active on there. I've just met so many. Oh, I know. <laughs> Post I've met funny so... shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've met so many great people, you know, that are atheists. And th th there's a Baptist that, that lives here, and he was telling me, you know, how I'm living in sin and going to burn in hell. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, dude, you're oh no, such, you're such a <laughs> dick. Like you're yeah. looking me right in the face and telling me I'm going to burn in hell. And he asked me. That's all they got. Like, oh all yeah. They got, and my God. I said, I don't, I said, I, cause he, I said, look, I mock your God because it would be like if someone mocked Yoda, Yoda's not real. Yoda's cooler than your <laughs> God, but he's not real. You know, like way cooler. <laughs> yeah. Way better too, you know, way better advice. But, and he was like, well, what keeps you from raping? And I'm like, well, I'm not a rapist. Like what, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> It's like, sad because uh, they're the yeah they're the opposite kind uh, side of the coin, but yeah, Pendulette the magician. Yeah, I, he, he said uh, he he once had a a, um, a conversation with a a Christian, and, and they said, "Well, where do you get your morals? Like, what's keeping you from raping and murdering people?" And um, Pendulette said, "No, you're absolutely right." Um, I, I, I rape and murder as many people as I want to. And that number happens to be zero. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and you know, the golden rule, if you know, don't, don't steal from people. You don't want to be stolen from, you know, it, it's, it's just weird because religious <laughs> people are just, wow. Yoda is God. <laughs> oh, Yoda. Yeah. Well, I, I used to be in AA and they'd be like, oh, well, progress, not perfection, because everybody was re relapsing. And and I said, what about do or do not? There is no try. Like I said, Yoda's better, <laughs> Yoda's better than B Bill W from. Yeah. And they're like, and I'm like, oh, only a Sith deals in absolutes, you know, like I just, <laughs> I just you know, like for me, I want to pursue my art, spend time with my son and just not hate myself every fucking minute of the day you know it i don't know it's it's really liberating just not to be shackled with belief like some people think i mean losing your faith is difficult the the process of doing it, it certainly can be yeah but but once you drop it it's just like you let go of a, a 50 pound dumbbell for me i was just like oh like wait a minute i can watch an r movie and then not feel guilty because i would still watch them but i hated myself afterwards you know and i don't know just i i'm glad i'm i'm distanced from it i can tell you that 
Well, I um, I there was a one of the, my favorite sort of pictures about the whole leaving religion is is it says free yourself on it, and it's got the religion written on a big ball with a chain attached to the leg that's being unshackled, mm-hmm. right? Because that's literally kind of what it is. Oh, yeah. a lot of people, but yeah, um, it can be really hard though for for some people to let it go because you know it's been their whole life and especially i found people i've spoken to that are say like you xjw or even ex uh, evangelicals they thought that they would be lost forever if they if they broke free from it but uh they soon realized afterwards that that's not the case and that's kind of one of the reason i do these sorts of things is so that people can hear these stories and 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 realize that they're not the only ones that had these types of thoughts and that there's a whole community of us out there yeah. that are there for you that w- w- open with open arms like you welcome welcome aboard you know we're, we're here for you well we got your back kind of thing and yeah uh, I mean, which is why i do the after parties right so you get to meet other people in the community that you've probably interacted with on twitter yeah that's cool that, that you know mm-hmm. the the community it's i it's so bizarre i uh yeah. i have I've, I've experienced more connection there um, with, you know, people who have left religion, even some people who are still religious, who maybe just left, you know, like Jehovah's Witnesses, which I, mm-hmm. to me, it seems like a lateral move. I'm not going to judge them, you know, but like, no, of course not. Yeah, it's. I've had people that have left like a really deep Christianity for paganism on the show because yeah. I was once pagan myself, so I can, I, I totally, uh um understand that right so Mm -hmm. yeah it's well and i think it's sometimes it's it's a bit of rebellion or it's a bit of like could be you feel feel empowered or just having fun like like i wear a ring that says 666 do i believe in (laughs) satan no but if it makes religious people uncomfortable i think that's kind of funny (laughs) i still wear the the star there There as a tribute to yeah previous beliefs that i had right and it's yeah, it's it's just so sad that like the children that are born into it, and especially I feel like because when I was a kid, there was no division between the children and the adults. You learn right. the same things, you studied this. You know, I'm 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 six years old hearing talks about bestiality, and then I'm like, and then I find oh, out what it goody. is, and I'm like, and, and in hindsight, like, oh my, I, Jesus God, but. <laughs> Now they have like little things you, you print out for the kids and these little cartoons. And I feel like, I feel like it, I don't know. It it feels like a desperate gamble by a dying religion to me, because when I was a kid, they didn't have televangelism. They hated it. Christian rock they were against. And now on their website, you know, they see that. I think members are sifting through their fingers because you have a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses that are PEMO, physically and mentally out. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope the governing body. I have a friend who has some connections in Bethel, and they told me that the governing body has a list of high ranking apostates, and I want to be on that list <laughs> <laughs> so bad. How, how do you get yourself on there? I mean, hopefully it's it's writing an apostate memoir. But if not, um, I it, on Halloween this year there's a rally uh, in D.C. against shunning, and I'm gonna go to that and um, hopefully meet some more people. And that reminds me. Uh, no, carry on. I just bro, was, um, I'm gonna mention something after. Before yeah, we I just because we we've done the hour here pretty much so. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just rambling. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite all right. You just finished what your thought was there for sure. Oh yeah, I just I want to go to that rally and keep putting out books and connecting with people and hopefully, you know, if if I can encourage them to pursue their passion or you know to I don't know whatever. It's just really I really enjoy meeting people. I do too. And on, actually, on that note, um, I don't know if any of you guys are able to do this, but uh, in, in May 5th and 6th in Calgary, Alberta, here in Canada, I'll be up there at the Western uh, Reason Convention along with Seth Andrews and Aaron Ra. I'm basically going just to see those guys because they're friends of mine. So 
I want to go and hang out with them and, and, and other people too, like Godless Mom and Janice Selby, who runs the uh, the uh, conference on religious trauma and whatnot. So uh, they're all going to be there and uh, we're going to go hang out. Some friends of mine are going to go hang out there in, in Calgary for a few days and, and have some fun. Also, uh, you mentioned um, about, uh, oh shit, now it just fell out of my head. Um, hang um, on here. <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, you're all right. I forget things all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time, and I just blame it on my age, but I'm just an idiot. So, <laughs> okay. Why are we, uh, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Uh, no, I, I put something else down below. Oh, yes, that's what it was. Never mind. You, you're talking about, um, a petition, which you, you, you've got a link to a petition to stop shunning by Jehovah's oh, Witnesses, right? Yeah, that, I have I, that I, link I, down I, there. Yeah, I, I created that a while ago, and um, it's getting you know, full. Yeah, it, it, last I looked, it was over 300 signatures. I try not to share it a bunch. I don't want to spam people and annoy them, but I try and do it every few months. It is you on know? your Twitter profile, so if anyone wants yeah. to follow you on Twitter, which is also linked below, um, then they can. Uh, Micah, well, uh, my friend, I, I think uh, we have done the hour here, and uh, we, we, we're, we're, we're going to talk more because we're going to get into an after party, okay, and cool. you get to meet some other my my crazy friends that are going to be joining us and have a little bit of fun. Uh, generally, I like to keep the after party just about an hour, hour and a half, give or take, uh, depending on how fucking tired I am, because I get up at quarter, or, no, now it's 20 to 4 in the morning oh, to, to go to work, yeah, so, wow. yeah, yeah, because I got to pick somebody up now. No, I don't gotta. I I offered to do so because he's, you know, he, he had to go by bus and he would always be late. And I'm like, well, you want to uh, make sure nice, you're getting though. your full wage. So yeah, and he's really it's like ten extra minutes, big deal. Yeah. Uh so yeah, we're gonna do that, guys. We are gonna get into an after party. So if you'd like to uh, just hang out in the chat, the link to the after party is in the description box below, or you can send me a message somewhere, and I can get you a link, and you can join Mike and myself and some other great folks just to hang out, but I do want to thank everyone uh, for hanging out with Mike and myself for the interview portion of tonight's show. Thank you. Um, it was awesome. And it's always fun when you guys are there, we can interact and stuff like that. So thank you. And also, whoops. Also thanks to my amazing patrons and we now have memberships available. So if you want to join the team, you get to use funny little emojis and stuff like that. And I, I don't think it's all that expensive. I didn't even look to be honest when I set it up, but I think it's just a couple of bucks or something. But uh, yeah, it does help the show and all the money that we're making for the next little while will be going to Mikey uh, to help him raise his little cute little daughter um, that he's with right now. Even though he, she, he sent me a little video, he's like calling her name, calling her name. She's just totally ignoring him. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> so, oh, Mikey, she hates you already. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys. Without you, the show, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thanks for all you guys do. And uh, as I said earlier, all the guest links are in the description box below. You can check out Micah's book that he wrote, and, um, uh, which is called Mentally Diseased. There you go. That's what it looks like there. Uh, yeah, and that's about it, guys. Uh, until then, like I always say at the end of the interviews, like the late, great Christopher Hitchens said, it's called Faith because it's not knowledge. And uh, we will see you guys next time.